Tyler, always great to catch up. It means usually that things are buzzing again and you're traveling around the world. Uh, what's it like in Milan? So last year it was canceled. Are, are there buyers? Are there buyers from outside? I know you, you have a, a little stand there. Absolutely. It is, it's really hopping, Francine. Of course, this is the week where you've got the three big powerhouses of, of Europe putting on their show. So, of course, the Salona here in Milan, of course, as we heard in your news report, the IAA in Munich. We've also got MIPIM happening down in Cannes at the moment. So Europe is alive. And I have to say it's incredible because it's not just people coming from across the border here in Milan. You have Japanese, you have Koreans, you have a lot of Americans here as well. And as you said, all gathering for something that, of course, was, was canceled um, almost a year and a half ago. Tyler, we used to have you on to talk about, you know, how travel was and some of the fun st stuff that we've for forgotten the last 18 months. But how is Europe doing? So compared to the U.S., where actually vaccination uptake in Europe is much bigger and there's not a no COVID policy like in Asia. Do you see like, you know, people really migrating and, and Europe kind of coming at the forefront of some of these events? I, there's definitely a push. And I think you really have to give full credit to the city of Milan and Lombardia, they've taken quite a pragmatic point of view. Of course, if people come, they're taking the risk to, to of course, be here. Um, they're also, of course, filling up hotel nights, spending a lot of money in the city. So there is a sense of, of balance. Uh, of course, you know, some companies have heavier measures than, than others. But you see that there is some sense of coming together and definitely a sense of lifting. I've been coming to Milan now pretty much all year. And the situation, Francine, uh, has, has definitely um, in, improved. I think it was, it was almost a little bit overbearing, of course, for obvious reasons for a while. But I think you know, we need to see a bit of a coming together in Europe at the moment. If people are going to be getting out, if you're going to be crossing borders, and many borders, even in one day for business, we have to have a little bit more of alignment. And right now, it's still a, a, a bit of a mix when it comes to, of course, uh, what hygiene requirements are. Um, Tyler, I also want to ask you about your media properties because you're launching, you've launched a new magazine. Do people still want to, you know, buy magazines and read them in paper form or has it moved online? Well, it's amazing. I think with so much screen time over the last, of course, year and a half, Francine, where people are just, you know, of course, glued to, to various uh, video conference calls on screen all the time, we see really an extraordinary um, uplift, especially at weekends as well. So it's not just our title, but if we look at also the weekend newspapers across uh, Europe, which we're selling in our kiosks, it's amazing. People don't want to be looking at, at a backlit screen. So I think just in terms of consumption, um, there's definitely something there. But the flip side, you know, we're sitting in Milan right now. Uh, we're in the midst of, of course, this, this major furniture fair. Uh, this city, of course, you know, is known as one of the luxury hubs for Europe. And I would say on paper, this is still where major luxury brands uh, want to be. Yes, they do digital. Uh, of course, uh, they do out of home. But you would say that a lot of those brand owners, they like, they like big real estate. They want to see their brands big. They want to see their logos big. And newspapers and magazines can still deliver that. So how do you see us, you know, spending, traveling and, and shopping differently post pandemic? Uh, I think it's well, I think if you put the two together, I think we're, it's a bit of a long haul still till we see a, a real bounce back for, for travel retail. I've been going through lots of European airports still. And you see, of course, a lot of those main, uh, let's say those luxury stores, many are still shuttered, but they are opening. Uh, you do see the doors uh, re reopening again. Uh, but certainly, I mean, we've, we've also seen that, you know, maybe, you know, some of the equations that people would work with are, are changing. Front of the aircraft uh, travel, if you look north of here, for example, uh, to, to Munich, of course, a major hub for Lufthansa, they've had to bring back uh, some of their old 340s uh, almost out of retirement uh, or out of the desert uh, because people want to be flying at the front of the plane. People want a little bit more space. If you're going to be in the air for nine hours, Maybe you don't want to be in premium economy. Maybe you're going to speak to your COO um, and be allowed to, to upgrade to the front. So I think that's certainly, I think, one area we're going to see change. And of course, Francine, there's been a huge uplift, of course, in the amount of private travel as well, or private aviation, oh, yeah. I should say. Yeah, we're, we're going to speak to the holder of the Amex here at Bloomberg. Um, Tyler, when you look at you know, the, the revenue spending or actually ad spending, you said you, you had a, a fantastic year for Monocle. Where's that spending coming from? Is it specific industries that actually want to make sure that they're not left out and so are spending, maybe took away a spending dollars from elsewhere, putting in magazines? Um, it's, it's really mixed. Um, it's, it's great. It's also there's a, there's a diversity and, and the risk is spread. 
But I think the big competition right now, Francine, is, is the bounce back. It, it's not, you wouldn't really say it's an industry, it's government. Uh, so you see government's inward investment agency spending, uh, of course, you know, encouraging people to, to set up shop uh, in other corners of the world. Tourism um, already as well. If we look out six months, you see a lot of uh, regions and governments really jockeying, of course, for spend uh, around the post-Christmas period um, as well. Financial services, uh, of course, uh, again, uh, with, with the major uh, banks uh, that advertise uh, with us. And again, wanting to have a different uh, narrative as well. I think they're looking to, of course, try to attract a different entrepreneur class. How do they go and tell those stories? And then, of course, you know, the luxury goods industry as well is incredibly important. Uh, and, and for us, uh, you know, if we look back, we're almost coming up to 15 years um, of being in this business uh, with Monocle. It will be our best revenue year ever. I mean, that's, you know, pretty incredible. Tyler, I mean, I haven't caught up with you for a pretty long time. How, you know, the last 18 months, how do you think it will change us? How, do, how does it change the business? Is there anything good that will come out of it? I, th I think it just makes us work harder. Um, I would say that, you know, for us, of course, we had to <laughs> Not wrong. adhere to many measures, but we, we were... We were, we were really um, out on the road a lot. Um, so yes, there was, there was enough screen time uh, as well, uh, but I really made sure, listen, we're in the news business like you are, people have to be out on the road. We don't have as many correspondents or as many bureaus, uh, but when and where possible, it was about being not just there to, to tell the story, but also being in front, of, in front of clients as well. That's something that can't change. Um, people, of course, will be more measured in terms of where they're going to spend when they, when, certainly when they send their staff out on the road. But I still think you have to come together face to face to close a big deal. All right. It's a date, Tyler. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see you actually in real life and maybe have a cappuccino face to face. Back in London Tyler soon, Bule hopefully. There. Back in London, the founder and editor in chief of Monocle.